But anyway, but all right. So here's the, here's the thing, yeah. Tom. Here's the thing. So you you write this uh, program and you run the company yourself for a year doing all the the uh, the tech work, and mm -hmm. you know d can't every engineering finance major do that? <laughs> How'd you uh, learn to write code and do all this stuff? Yeah, most of that was self taught at the time. It was funny. I was going to school for mechanical engineering is what I started going for, and then I switched to finance. And nowhere along that path <laughs> did it ever really occur to me to maybe go for a computer science degree. Right, right. Well, maybe you're um, better off. Maybe you're better you off. You <laughs> know, maybe, maybe it worked out in, in, in that favor there. But yeah, it was all self-taught. It was a lot of hours in the library. That was the thing we did back then. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and searching around on the, on the internet in various forums and whatnot that existed at the time. You know, Stack Overflow wasn't a thing back then. <laughs> um, but, you know, the knowledge was out there. You just had to seek it out and find it. And the first version of Aweber was very, very basic. Um, you know, at this point, we've got a team of, you know, nearly 100 people and uh, several dozen engineers that are working on the platform every day. You know, we've invested hundreds of millions of dollars into the platform at this point. Um, so it's, you know, it's it's evolved over time. And, you know, I think as as a group of entrepreneurs that we all are here it, it, it's really about iterating like no matter what you do the first thing you always look back on it and be like wow that was really terrible <laughs> in hindsight because you have the knowledge and and uh, you know the 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 value of of looking back in hindsight of being able to know what you know now but going back and looking at what you did then and I would certainly do things differently than than you know based on what I know now. But at the oh, time, that's the way the whole world it, is. You know, it worked. Yeah, <laughs> it so, worked. So one one thing I like about it and why I've kept it so long is uh, what what is called, and I I don't think we've said this word on this podcast so far is integrations. So you know, I I promote Kickstart Cart because that's my thing with the shopping cart system and all that. But but it's not as well known as uh, a Weber. And Aweber has got integrations with all kinds of other things that I want to do. So I can hit a couple buttons and all of a sudden, bam, wham, you're connected to this new thing that I want to uh, deal with. And I'd mm -hmm. had to try to get into the API and try to beg people to figure it out. And, and it's just as easy to just hit a button and they already know about you. And there are, you're probably one of the first places people make deals to integrate with, I imagine. Yeah, exactly. yeah, we have hundreds of integrations mm -hmm. with different platforms, like, you know, different, uh, um, a lot of e-commerce type mm -hmm. providers, anywhere you're getting new prospects from, like, you know, there's a variety of website builder tools and uh, CRM platforms. And, you know, the, you, you name it, we have integrations with it. Uh, we have, I forget what the number is, like around 600 or so at the moment. Uh, different platforms that we integrate with. Um, All right, so come just, on, when you gonna when are you going to start a shopping cart? <laughs> well, Come we on, have, man. <laughs> we have uh we have e-commerce enabled in all of our landing pages so people can put uh you know landing pages out there on on the web and web pages up where they can accept uh credit cards. I know, but um, I'm going to hit you up. I'm going to hit you up offline <laughs> about this, you know, cuz uh, if there's anybody I would trust to do it right and with high integrity and high delivery rates because of all the work you put in behind the scenes. I mean, you could probably be 10 times richer than you are now if you'd have just done what most other companies do and just kind of slide by. But you've got a team that is really on the ball. Well, a big part of having success over many years is yeah. investing investing in platforms and continually building better than what you did the day before. So it's a it's a constant iteration, and, and you certainly can't rest on on what you did the day before. So, because somebody else is out there building and and trying to one up you from from that perspective, well, they got so a long way to go with you for sure. So, so what are some <laughs> of the biggest mistakes you see beginners making in email marketing? And make sure you include something about metrics. Yeah, the um, the, the the biggest mistakes, uh, honestly, are, are some of the simplest things to to fix. Um, you know, when you're when you're asking for people to subscribe on your website, whether it's a, a newsletter, a monthly newsletter, or you know, blog updates, or just getting a notification about your new podcast episodes, those those sort of things, is they don't senders don't um, set expectations with people mm -hmm. on what they're going to send. Uh, hey, it's sign up for a newsletter. Well, what's going to be in your newsletter? Why should I care <laughs> yeah. about signing up for your newsletter? Right. And then similarly how often are you going to send that? Because in my head, when I sign up, I might think, oh, you're going to send me a monthly newsletter. But then it turns around 